Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to the artist talk of. Oh, I just, I'm sorry, I forgot, I lost one of my papers. Yeah, I want to, <laughs> hello again, uh, to the artist talk of Randamir St. Lara Tabet, both a teaching a course online at the Salzburg Summer Academy uh, this summer, which started on Monday. I, uh, the, the whole event will uh, have the duration of one hour approximately. Uh, I will introduce very briefly the two artists and then they will talk for 40 minutes and approximately again, and then you have the possibility of asking questions. The uh, talk is called Nothing is Happening, Delete the Picture. And it's an artist talk by Jean Imorou. Uh, and Jani Maro are Randamir St. Lara Tabet. Uh, Randamir uh, works mainly with photography and live video performances and questions the nature of images and their social issues. She exhibited widely internationally, uh, for example, in Arles, at the Les Rencontres d'Arles in Arles, in France, or in the Nomadic Art Center in Brussels. She, uh, there was a monographic exhibition sh scheduled for Salzburg this summer, but it was postponed and it will be next year. Lara Tabet is a practicing medical doctor and visual artist. Her artistic practice is informed by her background in pathology and inspects the legacy of trauma in Lebanon. She also exhibited widely and internationally, for example, in uh, Tabacalera, Lera, sorry, Tabacalera in San Sebastian in Spain, or the or in Mosaic Room in London, or Beirut Art Center, or recently in the Institut du Monde Arabe in Paris. So I would like uh, to ask you both uh, to now give your talk. Thank you. And I have to perhaps have to say we are especially happy that you are here and giving the course and giving the talk. Thank you. Um, we just wanted to say that this is less an artist talk and more a first, first hand testimony of the past year that we spent mostly in Lebanon through our phone images. So we start. Okay, good. On October 15, dry weather, high temperatures, and strong winds caused the worst wildfires in decades seen in Lebanon. The three privately donated firefighting aircraft who were capable of putting out these fires were out of maintenance due to the negligence of the government. Lebanon lost that night more than 3,000 acres of trees. cultural institutions that their place was on the streets with the people. Ever since that day, all cultural events have been scared, mainly due to financial struggles. On October 17, the government announced a tax of $6 a month on internet voice call services on WhatsApp. The of telecom in Lebanon is one of the highest in the world, and most of us rely to stay in touch with the white diaspora. 
the revolution has just started. Not only in Beirut. For example, this is one of the northern suburbs. People were taking the streets every day. We just needed to wake up in the morning and go down on the street to find thousands and thousands of people day and night roaming on the streets chewing and uh, raising Lebanese flags and asking for the government to We started reclaiming public spaces, tagging all the walls, destroying the banks, blocking streets, civil disobedience. Months before the protest started, Lebanon was already deep inside an economical crisis. After October 17, the banks closed under the pretext that the employees cannot arrive safely to their working spaces due to the protests and roadblocks. Politicians and bankers accused the revolution of precipitating the economical collapse. The price of the dollar on the black mar market started to rise. People started reclaiming public space. This is the Teatro of Beirut, tagged with a, with a slogan, so that the earth, so that we, the earth goes back to us. This place was closed for the last 30 years. It's a beautiful theater that has been destroyed during the war and it was located in the city center and uh, people were, I have never seen it before the revolution. So by when we went to the street, we were able to destroy the, the, the fences and go inside the building. Public spaces in Lebanon are very scarce and this was one of the major outbreaks that the revolution allowed us to do. This, this is another space that, that, that we took during the revolution. It's called, we call it the egg. It's the, it's uh, the, the city. Uh, it's an old it's, cinema. It's an old cinema located in downtown Beirut that it has been destroyed also by the war. For some time we were able to do some events in it, but then it was completely closed because the land was sold to foreign investors. So people started going inside those buildings and organizing talks and raves and uh, screenings and screenings while across the city people continued uh, burning trash and, uh, and, and, and sitting in the, in the public spaces. Besides revolutionary, <coughs> revolutionary joy, we were able to express the anger that we had against the oligarchic warlord, warlords government that has been governing Lebanon uh, for the past 30 years. For 10 days, the people were demonstrating on the street, asking for the, the prime minister to resign. And that was the time lapse before he said he will, be, he will resign in a couple of days. And this is the countdown for his resign. People were tagging all, 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 the, all, the, all the walls. And these are pictures of all the politicians that we can, that that are responsible for uh, poor economic poor 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 situation and corruption. 
people started reclaiming everything they ever wanted. There has been uh, tags concerning hash legalization. There has been tags concerning uh, queerness. queerness, reclaiming public spaces, reclaiming taxes on religious buildings. Uh, feminist, uh, feminist slogans. One of the most striking things about the revolution is that it was very decentralized. In some cities that had a clear political government governance, it was very difficult and dangerous. So solidarity movement happened everywhere where people from Beirut would go to other villages and uh, vice versa. People were just sitting on the streets day by night, organizing. to go back to their homes. People slept in tents. Every night, activists would gather around tents on Martyr Square and have various open discussions about politics, the financial future, and what the protest movement ought to do. It was the first time that politics was happening on the streets. A new generation that hadn't witnessed the war and had no following to the sectarian oligarchic ruling class. That was, a, that was a time when we, we decided to leave Beirut because the, the people uprised everywhere and we went to the south, uh, to Nabatiye. And it was the day where the chief of the Hezbollah were having a speech in which he didn't stand by the people. Instead, he standed by the corrupt ruling class. The, we also reclaimed the uh, 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 a bridge on, that connects East Beirut to West Beirut because during the civil war, the, these two cities were divided and there was this bridge called, that we called the ring. And uh, whenever, and at certain points in time, we felt that uh, the government was, in, was comfortable with us being in the city center. So we started blocking this highway. And also, we, the, the people decided to go to the, to the presidential palace. Billboard started putting Lebanese flags, uh, mostly so that they won't be destroyed, I think. Then one day, so the, the people decided to do a human chain and connects the north of the country to the south of the country, which is approximately 200 kilometers 
length and people were con trying to make a human chain across all the coastal line and everybody came on the streets so basically there was all the all the regions and all the confessions and all the division but the people were uh, united in this symbolic gesture so that's we go back to the ring because it's uh, close to our house so we were we, we would regularly go there and uh, and and some people brought mattresses the there was many many uh, meetings in the city center where people would gather and there would be specialists or or people concerned and that have knowledge low and low or in, uh, in the constitution or economical expert who would be explaining uh, about certain topics and it was kind of a democracy in the making everybody was dis discussing and and gaining knowledge line um, on October 29th in this picture we see warlord thugs destroying revolutionary tents while security forces st st uh, stand around watching tents was, for example, Matbakh al-Balad, a local initiative that was providing warm food for those in need. The key places where we were protesting were the Central Bank, uh, the Ring, uh, Electricité du Liban, and Telecom. Uh, the revolution was very violent. The ISF forces used uh, out-of-date tear gas canisters, rubber bullets aimed at the head. And very regularly, people continued organizing these talks, performances, and uh, screenings, discussions. And while... Renda cut her hair. <laughs> So that's the telecom building, that's the, the electricity building. At a certain point of time, we understood that we have to go to the main institutions and demonstrate there. So these are also uh, demonstrations in universities. Uh, this, this is a view of Eden Bay, a five stars hotel illegally constructed on Beirut's only public beach under the protection of a of an influential politician. Reclaiming beach property was one of the main demands as most of the littoral is privatized. And of course the, the police was protecting the private illegal property. This is a concert that was taking place, but I think I will go a bit uh, uh, faster because we still have a lot of things to talk about. And uh, maybe we, we move on to the... Again, these are exhibitions that have been taking place and re and and uh, uh, maybe we talk about this picture okay
on, uh, on November 12th, an army vehicle shot in the air and killed Ala Abu Fakhr, who became the revolution's first martyr. The, the Lebanese army said that the killer would be prosecuted by a military trial, which goes against human rights law. Uh, these images are also from Tripoli. Yes, another city, the, the, the Lebanon's second city, but one of the poorest and most marginalized uh, who, that became the voice of the uprising. On uh, the 22nd of November uh, is the Independence Day uh, oh, sorry, on November 19, protesters blocked all six entrances of the parliament building to prevent the approval of a blanket amnesty law that aimed at pardoning drug dealing and Islamist and collaborationist crimes, as well as collaborationism. The sectarian card was meant to put at ease the eager of various sects and, ext and extinguishing the uprisal. These were the numbers, like we were asked to put the numbers of lawyers that were very active during the revolution. So, because a lot of people were getting arrested. So that's, that slogan really summarizes the whole situation in Lebanon. The day, the, so th that was one of the parli parliamentary who tried, despite the people blocking the parliament, to enter the parliament while jumping on a motorcycle. On the 22nd of November is Lebanese Independence Day. And we, since we owned the, the city center, we decided to do our own Independence Day. So this was the organizational plan of how we will organize our Independence Day without the politicians and without the army. So people were a walking with a group of people. A motorcycle uh, and it was like a carnival in which the politicians were not allowed. And every group, like these are the engineers and these are the, the people who work in agriculture uh, that were marching and these are the industrials and these are the motorcycle people who, who, were, who were walking across, uh, who, who, who were doing like a parade, like a military parade. And these were the actors that at a certain point of time, the demonstration started being more violent repressed. and repressed. This is a picture from Marj Bisri, which is a beautiful land that is, uh, uh, they're gonna do, uh, they want to put a dam on this land and this dam is, is going to cost millions of dollars and we're not even sure that the, 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 the dam is going to serve the people. There is also archaeological landscapes, archaeological uh, archaeological uh, ruins, and it's an agricultural land, so the fruits were left to die on the tree branches. So migrant workers as well was dem were, were demonstrating with, with, the, with the Lebanese people. To abolish the kafala system, which is a slavery system that uh, gives no right to domestic migrant workers in Lebanon. At that point, the the banks starting. At that point, the demonstration started being more and more violent. So we're going to talk about about the financial situation of Lebanon. Lebanon is a highly indebted country and mostly to its local banks. Basically, to be simple, it's not very simple. Basically, depositors have their money in the banks. 
the banks loan this money to the state at a high interest rate. The state or the central bank goes bankrupt, so the people's money evaporates. Lebanese banks impose severe restrictions on the ability of depositors to make cash withdrawals and international transfers from their dollar accounts. However, almost all the politicians were able to smuggle out their money shortly before that. ATM started closing. Banks started closing their door and ATM were not giving money anymore. So people started rushing to the banks to, in, to, in order to take out as much money from their bank account as possible. So the central bank foreign reserves were used to pack the dollar since 1997 at a 1,500 lira rate. And since the reserves in foreign money dwindled, uh, the, the dollar to lira rate skyrocketed in the black market and prices of imported items, which is almost everything, 80% of Lebanon's good, more than quadrupled. People started going to the banks, asking for their money. And destroying ATM machines. So the banks started blocking by putting metal, metallic doors in front of their glass, glass shiny vitrines. The, the revolution started being at the banks and not at, in the streets and less and less on the streets. Meanwhile, people were fed up doing peaceful demonstration, chanting and singing and doing performances and they started throwing stones at the parliament and the police repression was very severe. At that point, everybody was rushing into to buy everything they could, they could buy with their local money. My mom was buying a house and she was furnishing it while we were having our revolution on the streets. Renda bought a photograph from a European artist so that she can save a few bucks. And slowly, slowly, we were understanding that we didn't have, that the money evaporated, that every, but everything that people ever gathered in banks were, is not accessible anymore. On top of this devaluation, a huge number of people lost their jobs or were paid half wages. Their salary, if they still had one, didn't amount to anything anymore. This is when the corona crisis hit us, like everybody else. The, 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 the streets were empty and the revolution was tamed. You could go down on the streets and what, what was the site of the revolution was empty of its people. We used to go down at night and photograph the city, having long, long walks away from the, the city's uh, traffic. We were aware that we were privileged to be able to stay at home without having to struggle to find money to eat. So we did some artistic projects. We were photographing our neighbor's building from our, from our binocular, putting an iPhone on the binocular and making pictures of what we could see from our window. So the coronavirus pandemic hits a country where hospitals are unequipped, people jobless, and the middle class practically non-existent. Confining people without a state policy for shelter, food, or medical coverage. These are images of me working as a doctor during the pandemic. Lara is a medical doctor, so she used to go very regularly to her working space 
and whenever she would take out her gowns, she would be photographing them while I'll be home photographing the the neighbors and uh, and and meanwhile there has the, the people continued the banks continued more and more restrictions on, on on the citizens and people were destroying the, the struggle between the people and the banks continued there has been some moments where we could escape and to the to, to the to nature people were scared the numbers of infection dropped after the confinement policy and frustration increased so the revolution was halted but as the fear of the virus went away we started protesting again the airport reopened with a quarantine policy that wasn't respected and cases started again to rise exponentially this is electricité du liban which is a major site of protest because in lebanon we scarce scarcely have any electricity and people rely on private, very expensive private generator uh, if they don't want to be in the dark most of the time. At that point with the corona as well coming there, the, the financial crisis started hitting the people very bad. All these are images of billboards without advertisements. there was nothing to advertise anymore because people didn't have money and to buy things. At that point, I was also as well photographing the city and um, photographing it to, to look to, so that it looks like the renderings of, uh, of the construction sites, of, of the renderings of future uh, construction site building the, the city how they dreamt it how they wanted it to be a city without without a soul without people and and with coronavirus this vision became the truth at that point of time Lebanon it was around 1st of July Lebanon opened its border and we were able to travel. So I needed to go back to Marseille where, 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 where I live. And, I, and for, 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 for a couple of weeks before uh, my trip was halted uh, in the middle. So I decided to go back on the 29th of July Sorry. On the 29th of July, and uh, when I arrived to, the, to Beirut at four o'clock in the morning, there was no electricity. I realized that the city was in the dark since two weeks. Lara came back down the, st down the stairs to welcome me and to help me bring my, log my baggages to the sixth floor. On August 4th, I was about to hop into the shower when I noticed from our apartment window that has a front row view on the port that something was burning, a reflex. I take my camera and I start shooting. Already I felt the consequences would be disastrous, if only from this huge fire in the harbor one kilometer away. The fire intensifies and we start hearing small explosions and as the sky grows darker, Randa shouts at me to pull back from the huge glass window. I negotiate one last picture. As the apartment resonates loudly, she frantically begs me to hide in the corridor, a safe space from our civil war laden childhood. I see the smoke getting closer and then I hear, now still vividly one week later, the loudest noise and a blast that throws me four meters to the wall and back. August. An explosion ripped through Beirut's port. 
people in Lebanon's capital had earlier spotted a large fire at the port billowing dark smoke into the air. There were reports that a warehouse containing fireworks had caught fire. I get back on my feet. The house has imploded. Randa's okay. How can I believe it? I'm wounded but alive. She urges me to put some clothes on. I'm frozen. I can't find any. Why is it important? I'm bleeding. Put your shoes on, she said. Take your passport, I beg. She's expecting a second attack. I want to leave before the building collapses. I wrap a curtain. We go down. The hospital is on the opposite street. Neighbors are rushing down. The staircase is full of blood. Are you okay? Are you okay? But what if they're not? I cannot help. We reach the street. The hospital is gone. When did we notice the scale of the explosion? It is suffocating, but the sky is a bright pink. I see a man dead on the sidewalk, bright red under his skull. Destruction and death all around. The smell of blood with nitrate. Randa still smells it everywhere. The next day, we went to, the, to our house, and this is how it looked like. It was a miracle that we made it with small injuries. Every door, every window exploded. There is, there is no more water in the building, and we have dead neighbors. The scale of the explosion was gigantic, hitting Beirut very wildly. As soon as the next day, people starting, started coming from everywhere and helping out, removing the rubbles, cleaning the apartments. The government didn't even go on site. No perimeter was secured. It took them a week to start securing perimeters. We, we emptied the house in three days and put all the furniture at Clara's mom's house. At that point, we could go on in the city and realize that it was not only our apartment that was hit or our neighborhood, but half of the city, literally. The next Saturday, there was a huge protest that we couldn't attend because loud, loud noises were still triggering us. It was a very violent pro protest where the army used live ammunition and tear gas. Uh, three days after, barely four days after the explosion. That's a small neighborhood in Beirut. We didn't get to see the rest of the destroyed neighborhood. <clears throat> and these are the people in the streets being evacuated from the hospitals. We're stopping here. Yeah, at certain points of time, I was also making pictures of the neighbors' apartments, as I did as we did during Corona. And we will stop on the last picture, which is Lara's healing wounds. Thank you for listening to us.
we're sorry it was a, it, we had to prepare the stock very quickly it was uh, emotionally tough for us but we we needed to do it and uh, uh, and talk about we we couldn't talk at that point about our artistic work so because what's happening is beyond imagination all the cultural association in lebanon are suffering and asking for donations there is not a single person who had not been hit we're going to put some donation links at the recording at the youtube recording recording of yeah, the from, talk from what i from the summer academy is going to put a youtube of a youtube recording of this talk and uh, we would like to add a donation list in the comments if anybody would like to participate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this. Uh, it's incredible. <laughs> One cannot believe it. Uh, I would like uh, to get into the discussion with everybody. So. Uh, all the participants could switch on their videos now if they wanted and then uh, we could try to have uh, like a discussion together. Um, we try to, uh, we are not so many, so we try to just that you can, perhaps you can raise your hand or you just start talking or you switch on your image, whatever uh, is uh, good for you. Uh, so perhaps I can ask the first question. I mean, or say, I mean, start saying that we are so glad that you are with us and that you are teaching at the, and that you shared uh, this story with us. Um, I mean, my first question would, uh, would be, what do you imagine uh, about the next weeks and months? How, how, how shall your life continue? Um, what do we imagine? I mean, we know the drill. It doesn't take much imagination. We've been through similar things before. It's going to be individual community-led initiatives that will try to reconstruct the city and aid people in need. Meanwhile, a lot of people are trying to, to take opportunity of the situation to buy the destroyed buildings at cheaper prices. Uh, people, IMF, not only people. Yes, and, uh, and politicians as well are considered that, like even the president said, that this is a good opportunity to stop the economical blockers, blockers on Lebanon and that money start, was going to start pouring again. Mm -hmm. uh, and what about uh, foreign countries? I mean, uh, Lebanon always was under influence of, of many different uh, states, like of the European Union, but also of Iran or Saudi Arabia or United Arab Emirates. Or now the French president uh, came to Beirut even. What, what do you think about that? And what are those nations, which role are they playing now when you also don't have any government at the moment? Well, I, I think they will bring some humanitarian aids, but they will... Or be... some construction contracts. And some contract, construction contracts. So in exchange of construction contracts. So the they are fighting who is going to reconstruct the city because there's a lot of money. The international community want uh, political stability that, ha I mean, they've, they've wanted that for a long time and they are the one who installed this kind of oligarchic government uh, in Lebanon. We, we, we don't have high hopes. We don't have, don't have high hopes. hope at all actually. 
it, was, uh, the, situa mean, the situation was already very blocked and it's hard to imagine it getting better. I think we're going to become poorer and poorer and uh, and all this happened in no time. So this is what the most crazy thing about it has happened very fast. Yeah, that's true. I was in Beirut in, in fall of 2017. And uh, I mean, it was a prospering city. Uh, I mean, when I visited it for me as a visitor, but it, it completely changed. Uh, it seems that we were living a lie, a financial lie, and then the bubble just exploded. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, perhaps I can ask a, a art historian question, <laughs> but you can also reject it, of course. Uh, uh, would you say uh, what you presented to us was in a way a documentary, a very personal documentary, but also uh, a performative lecture in a way, or or in which role do you see yourself now? I mean, sure, it ended up being a performance, but mostly we did this lecture out of... Um, we, we chose this format out of necessity because it was the only thing that made sense to us. And using these images that were often not uh, thought of uh, being only a first-hand account of us being on the street or in the banks or, or sometimes at sea or, or in bed. Mm. So yeah, it is a visual testimony, but one without much of veneering. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that at the point uh, that at, it's been the tenth day, I think, to the explosion and. Uh, Everybody's living a very strong trauma and everybody's coping with the trauma in a different way. So for us, it was about cleaning the apartment as soon as the next day. And while other people could not, couldn't go back to the site of the explosion, but we wanted to leave. We wanted to just be, uh, to get away somehow. And since then, the, the building was deemed unsafe anyway. We, we had an, an intuition to run and... So the building, you cannot live in the building anymore. It can fall down or every single minute. They're assessing that, but at the moment it's not safe. Okay, okay. I was so struck by an interview with you, Lara. Uh, I read today in the internet where the interview asked you what personal myth does your work reveal and you say, pre-trauma, trauma, post-trauma, post yeah? And I thought, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. It's strange because I had shifted away from this practice and started working more with science and art, but then this brings me back to, it's like I, I it's gonna bring me back to, to this, uh, to this reflection on, on trauma, traumatic experiences and the city. Uh, is there anybody else who wants to ask a question in the crowd? <laughs> I think we are also uh, struck by what you uh, told us. I, uh, perhaps I can go back to the revolution because there was a moment in the beginning of the revolution where people were really very, very um, looking positive into the future and thinking that democracy can come through what uh, through gathering in the streets and uh, I uh, if I understood it correctly I mean your society was divisioned by the religious groups a lot but this revolution brought them together and the women were so important also in your fo photographs there were like women marches and also the LGBT community was important and before that it was kind of half forbidden or whatever uh, so but it was very brief but there was this huge hope yeah? it wasn't very brief 
it wasn't uh-huh. very brief and i think that the system will die okay it's, we ju- just didn't expect it to to take that long and to be we, I think it's like going back to a darker place before, but uh, this system has died. Whether something better comes after it, but the legitimacy of the ruling power as it is, or as it was, died because financially also they proved inefficient. Yeah, and and, uh, Gramsci said that when a system is dying and another system is not born yet, in the middle there is chaos but he didn't think about an explosion that has been identified as the biggest explosion in the world, the non-nuclear explosion in the world. Oh God. So after uh, uh, the the amount of destruction and the amount of injuries and death toll that is still rising because- Poverty and the poverty and people now le- uh, lost their homes. Um, and businesses. And businesses. And livelihoods. And, and, and they cannot access, if somebody has money, they cannot access the money in the banks. So it makes the situation super complicated and make us dependent on aid. Mm-hmm. That doesn't come without a price. So Manuel, you want to ask something? Yeah. Um, thank you, you two, for having the power to share this with us. Um, it's really horrible. You said you can't talk about your artistic practice. Um, how do you think will your artistic or non-artistic future look like? Or do you want to come back to an... Do you uh, have... I don't know. Sometimes I think I want to be a florist. I think it's too soon for me, at least, to, yeah. to think about that. I, I hope uh, uh, sooner than later. Uh, well, I, I moved to France seven years ago, so my economy is not based in is not based in Lebanon. So what we're what we're waiting for right now is that uh, European Union allows Lebanese citizens to enter the Schengen space, so that we can go to and live together in Marseille. And our, um, for example, there's a lot of people who had survival guilt after the explosion. Mm -hmm. I don't have survival guilt, but I feel guilty because I'm going to leave my friends uh, and my, to fight, to, 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 was to fight the, the corrupted system, uh, but it is a fight that I, I decided that I will not have. Yeah, but there's a huge brain drain. I mean, this is going on for many, many years already, no? that many, many people are leaving uh, Lebanon. And there is, I mean, there is a huge uh, ex. Uh, commu- Lebanese community all over the world since yeah like, Lebanon exports only one thing the brains <laughs> yeah because the financial system that they they constructed was based on people migrating and bringing American dollars to the country so that's also planned and directed it's not uh, it's not people who are leaving it's they are making us leave mm. but I think now more than ever not only the privileged and the middle class will leave but many, 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 many will. I, I feel that the next people crossing the Mediterranean illegally will be Lebanese. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sorry. On this note. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank I mean, you. It's, it's really difficult to be, to have to be positive or to have any hope at this point. Uh, I th- the, the, they are still uh, taking out uh, people from the rubble every day. So uh, it's not over yet. I mean, I mean. Anger is building up. This is where we are right now. Anger is building up. Some people are healing, some people are fighting. Mm-hmm. And the people who went to demonstrate on Saturday after the, the, the explosion, 
They were fighting with their bodies. They had nothing except their anger to fight while, while the, the military were shooting uh, real bullets. And uh, so this is where I think there is demonstration every day. And even politically, I, f I think that they are t discussing to bring back the government that fell on the streets during the revolution. So, so it's like all this, everything that happened since October is going back to the same place. And, and do you think that uh, it makes sense? I mean, you put in these links where we could uh, donate money. And this, uh, I mean, donate this money is good. You would suggest to do it. In fact, what, ha what has been happening is that everybody is asking uh, organization and in, in, uh, even nations not to give money to the government. So we're trying to bring the money through NGOs, through trusted NGOs. I wouldn't. I would even go to more uh, individual organization. I mean, sure, NGOs, but mostly community-led uh, initiatives. For example, for the cultural and the arts, there are a lot of initiatives that uh, are community-led and uh, that we can trust the money will be distributed fairly. Okay, so when uh, you, you know whom to trust because, uh, yeah. We think I, we know. You think you know, <laughs> yeah. So, for example, the Lebanon Solidarity Fund or whatever, you will post it. Yeah, the Lebanon Solidarity Fund is the AFAP fund, right? Yes. Yes, it's a very good fund. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because you yeah. don't want to uh, uh, invest money into your corrupt government and you never know how, where it goes. I mean, even the next day after the explosion, for five days, there was no, the military, the 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 police the all the the nobody was helping the people people 17 years old and 20 years old were going on the streets with brooms helping people i mean if this it was the new generation that hadn't witnessed the war that came to the rescue so we 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 are building this thing it was difficult to see because it was rather heartwarming but quite unsafe mm -hmm. that. yeah I mean, we had 50 people coming inside the house and taking out trouble, and they were all over the city uh, cooking food and distributing food. And I think a lot of the families went to parents' house, but I think that with time, it's gonna be more complicated. I mean, you can go shelter for a period of time at loved ones, but it's still, but, but, but after a while, it's going to be complicated. Yeah, sure. Um, so is there anyone else who would like to ask something? Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 This is Manal. Hi. Hi. Hi, Manal. I'm gonna leave my uh, camera off because my internet keeps saying it's unstable. But uh, I just wanted to say alhamdulillah salami and it's, uh, I'm so glad you're both okay and I'm so sorry. Um, and I'm wondering, since you're teaching uh, now, uh, I'm assuming your class is still happening and you're teaching online. Wait one second. Yeah, Manal, you said we were teaching. Are you teaching your class online? And I am curious how you're approaching all of these issues with your students, both in Europe and uh, Lara, I know you've taught in the past in Beirut. I don't know if you will be teaching again uh, and how your, how, what your approach to being a, 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 you know, an educator in this time is and how, you, how you're working with your students and how your students are doing in the midst of all of this. Well, it's a difficult question because I decided not to teach in Beirut because the salary is dismal uh, and I decided to leave. So the kind of teaching we are doing right now is with the summer academy. So most of our, like all of our students are foreigners and we are dealing with this issue uh, with denial. 
and the, the students are uh, very, I mean, they were very comp uh, understanding and they keep asking about us and we do what we do best. We're in denial, we're giving the scores, it's helping us wake up in the morning, wake up in the morning, not to think and talk about the explosion. It's yes, kind of the best on. part of the day. <laughs> yes. I mean, we're, we're in an artist residency right now at Hamana Artist House. La La Land. So they accepted to shelter us for two weeks due to, for us to give this course. And there are many traumatized people as well who, is, who are visiting every day. And we're having dinners and talking about the explosions every day. And uh, thinking why we're not in Beirut protesting. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. But, but the people who lived the explosion firsthand uh, is, I mean, I'm, I, I can't take any violence anymore. I'm, I'm, I, it was very, very, uh, mm. it was very difficult. I can't, I don't think that I can go on the streets and shout at anybody or receive a bullet or, or any kind of confrontation. I think what we need to do right now is to, to heal and then uh, we will think better and act better maybe. I hope I can soon enough, like really soon. It's all very understandable, but thank you for doing this talk and sharing and, and for teaching. I think it's important for your students to, even if you don't want to talk about it, and I'm sure they are gaining something from, from uh, what you're bringing to them. Thank you. Good to see you both. Good to Thank hear you your voice. Um, I have a question, if possible. Yes. Um, Lara and Randa, I'm, I'm your friend, so it's, it's very difficult to... Ah, I recognize the voice. Hello, sir. To see you. Uh, it's very touching to, to see you and see your work and, and hear your testimony. Um, as you know, I, like a lot of Lebanese, live abroad. Uh, we are the expats that, that flood the Lebanon on Christmas, but that are not here actually to live the the difficult reality that you have been living. Um, Randa, you mentioned the guilt, the survivor guilt that some people have. I personally have it, and I think that we are a lot in this situation because we have not witnessed what you, what you witnessed. Um, what is, my question is, what is the way, how, how can we, what are the right words that we can have with you? Um, what is the proper way for us to support you? Um, and yeah, and go beyond this, this guilt of not being there and not being hurt like you were hurt. You know my answer because we're very close friends. Don't have guilt, uh, uh, bring the money. <laughs> send, send, send dollars. Send dollars. <laughs> I mean, today was hyperinflation. I forgot to mention that we are uh, in hyperinflation now, and it's not only inflation. A uh, hundred dollars is worth one million Lebanese lira. So, so that can be that. Uh, I think. I uh, uh, yes, for me, for right now, I don't see anything except. Uh, maybe organizing, making uh, strong lobbies. And uh, I think we need to organize politically. Yeah. Uh, and we some, you know, like exile is, is not, I mean, never has been a state of bliss, uh, less so now. But yeah, organizing uh, politically, pressuring uh, the governments of the, I mean, there have been a lot of sit-ins and protests outside consulates uh, yes. and state uh, and uh, elsewhere. But yes. yeah, I mean, we're going to be in your situation in a couple of months, maybe. Maybe it might take a year, but... We... Okay. Okay, thank you again for, for sharing. 
And how is it with all this social media? Like, do you feel, is, is it, I mean, today it was quite a bad day for me with social media and I thought like, oh, I want to be alone. I, is it a, a good thing for you now to have all these possibilities to connect with people? The residency, for example, I guess you find it online. Um, this must be something good, I guess, or how is it? Um, this is a local residency that, like, uh, it's a network of, of, of artist friends. Um, in terms of social media, uh, we mainly use it as a drug to, I mean, I don't know, it's difficult when, when you live in a constant heightened political state and then uh, Facebook becomes your main area of uh, news because it is the most uh, live feed and uh, sometimes the most trustworthy. So our relationship to social media, I think is, is different than, than other more at peace countries. We're addicted to it. And, uh, and in fact, until today, and we're still Uh, having testimonies of people who were injured. I mean, it was impossible to check on everybody. Until now, we still have like just five minutes before the talk, a friend of mine came in the, in the room and he had also his own story and, and, uh, and, and he's now also in the mountains and his house has been destroyed and his friends has been killed and so every time there is still we, uh, social media to in fact to, to be able to know still what's happening also to organize to i mean the role of social media is huge in like in all the arab uprisings it was uprisings it was it was huge and and here as well but in in, in everything in role in anger and grief it's, uh, it's sneaky like that Um, any more questions from somebody? So, hello, I'm Geraldine. <laughs> hello, Geraldine. Hello. So, at first, uh, thank you both for the deep and personal insight. Um, I'm really shocked and it makes me very sad and kind of helpless. Um, uh, And, but I'm also glad that uh, teaching gives you some distraction and a bit of structure in, in this difficult time. So uh, spontaneously, I, I, want, I prefer to support you directly <laughs> if this would be um, possible. <laughs> No, we're, 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 we, we find that we are, I mean, we're part, we're financially more privileged than others, even, mm -hmm. even if we occurred financial losses and, and there's, yeah, we're way up the ladder of, of what is happening. So personally, I think that if direct donations are to be made, I can find someone who uh, will convey it to families that need it. I mean, the, 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 the spectrum of need is, is very, very, very big. And uh, I think we should fill it from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But thank you. <laughs> we, yeah. will, we will put a list of, of, of donation on the YouTube channel. Yes, okay, I, I will see, yes. And um, it's interesting, um, for me, uh, with uh, we work together. Um, I'm a student now, uh, and um, for you both, and um, it's really great that you do this. And um, it, it's it's um, it, it it brings a spot to my work uh, in another way. So I have to <laughs> I have to go. Uh, in a in a new direction, really, mm. for my for my selection, you know what I mean. 
Yes. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jolene. Yes. So I have no question. So I, uh, one question. You are safe now in this local place. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're very safe. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we are safe. We're surrounded by nature and silence. Okay. And the beautiful people supporting us psychologically and emotionally. Yes. We, we did uh, very good choices, I think, since the explosion. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so if there are no more questions, uh, I can only thank you again. And yeah, and wish you good luck also to come to Europe. Yeah, we will stay in contact. Thank, Thank you so much you for following our uh, dramatic uh, yeah. story. Our dramatic yeah. year. And you will have the exhibition in Salzburg in one year. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. It's ready. Yeah. So we can finally meet in person. Hope so. Okay, so let's. Uh, I mean, we cannot clap as we usually do after this kind of talks and it's perhaps also not the time to clap. But thank you very much. Thank you and good Hello. luck. Bye, bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.